out here in Las Vegas. You guys might get sick of us, but I don't care because I love it <laughs> out here next to Akil Augustine. I'm Savannah Hamilton. You're watching Raptors today. We chatted with Ron Harper Jr. just moments ago. So, Akil, tell me what you took away. All right, well, first off, this young man, he's big. This kid's got some shoulders. Mm -hmm. He's going to fill out, but he's a very talented player. Comes from a basketball family. His dad was once known as Plan B with the Cavs, member of Jordan's Bulls team. And now this young man's coming out of Rutgers, ready to go. I watched him in college. He was a physical player. He shot the ball, ball handler, created his own shot. So he's kind of got the NBA game, and he fits the prototype that the Toronto Raptors have been building with so far. And I got to say that the Filipino community of Toronto is going to be absolutely ecstatic to have Ron Harper on the floor. I'm looking forward to whether it's in Mississauga or downtown mm -hmm. Toronto for my Filipinos to come out in full force to support this young man. But definitely, the, probably another compelling thing is right before our interview, mm -hmm. He was lifting weights. He came straight from the rate room to the interview, so we know he's getting that muscle up mm -hmm. to bang around with these guys, both in summer league and regular season. He's putting in that work already, but let's hear from him now. Ron, first and foremost, what kind of sense of where you would end up did you have going into the draft process? So ultimately, I thought I put myself in a great spot to get drafted. You know, it's a crazy, it's a crazy experience for sure. But as the draft went on. Uh, I kind of got the sense, you know, I might go undrafted, but, you know, once, once the Raptors called my agent, I was real confident that I, I got the right spot, I found the right fit, and I'm just blessed to be here. How familiar are you with the story of Fred Van Vliet and the whole bet on yourself vibe? Uh, real familiar, you know, he was an undrafted guy coming out of college, he had a great career, which is State, and then he came into the league undrafted guy, and he just did his thing, and he just stuck to the plan, he showed up every day and was consistent in what he did, and I'm going to try to replicate the stuff that he did to make himself successful. Speaking of replications, when you look at this Ra Raptors team, they're kind of known for the 6'8", versatile, switchable player. So understanding that, was that something that excited you about coming to this team? Yeah, yeah they, like, they like long guards and wings that can guard multiple positions on the floor and that can really spread the floor and shoot the ball. So it was a real perfect situation for me. You know, once I found out they wanted to bring me in on a two-way, I was really excited. I was really excited to get to Toronto work and, you know, just being here, uh, working out with them in the summer league, it's been a, it's been a great experience. Are you aware of the Filipino contingent back in Toronto? Uh, I heard it's big. You know, I heard there's a lot of Filipinos in Toronto. So I'm excited to get out there, get to know some of them. You know, I love my culture. I love giving back. So it's definitely going to be fun. It's going to be wild. From a Torontonian, man, our Filipino community is going to love having you. But uh, speaking about the transition from college to the pros and from the draft to the pros, mm -hmm. how did you spend your time? You know, Christian was out in L.A. doing workouts with the guys. Were you there? Or was there someone yeah. specific like, you know, like Rico Hines and those types of guys who do special workouts? What were you doing with your time? Uh, so at first, uh, the draft's on Thursday the 23rd. Sunday, I headed up to Toronto for about three, four days. Got the workout with Coach Eric Corey, you know him, a couple other guys, and I got three good days of working, and I headed out to L.A. to work out with Christian, Coach A.G., and Coach Jim, and so we had, a, we had a good week out there, and D.J. Wilson was there, too, and, you know, we pushed each other, and we got better, and, you know, that's what it's all about. What are your expectations for this summer league? Uh, just go out there and win games, you know, control what you control. I'm going to go out there, make the winning plays, and do everything I can to help this team win at the end of the day. That was Ron Harper Jr., but we also talked to Nick Nurse, who has talked to us for the first time here in Summer League. Akil, what would you make of that? Well, first off, he's happy with the signings, right? Mm -hmm. Bobby Webster, Masai Ujiri back home, doing the work necessary. Uh, but I, I talked to him specifically about the coaching because, you know, if we look at the staff for this 905 and, and Summer League kind of joined yeah. force, over the last couple of years, some bodies have left. Jammers with the Warriors, running practices, doing big things. Patrick Mutombo recently left. Mm -hmm. So there's a wealth of quality coaches that have left, and now he's reintroducing other guys. He's bringing Gleason off of his bench yep. to kind of test the waters to see if this pipeline still exists of quality coaches. And I think we all know it does, but it's exciting to see Nick Nurse getting a chance to see his coaches blossom as well as his players. So much talent within the coaching system of the Toronto Raptors and the 905 system, but let's hear from Nick Nurse himself. You, you talked about Christian a little bit there, and, and we heard your press conference, but now that you actually have had a little bit more closer contact, closer touch, I'm impressed with him as an individual, but talk about the man and the player. Yeah, first of all, you're right. Um, very conscientious person, good dude, right, which is which is great, high character. Um, listen, he's got some skill that I think maybe is um, part of his vast improvement. Like, like he catches pretty well, he handles it good, he's passing. Um, which I think you're always concerned about with a, that position, and I, that looks good. His feet look uh, quick. Uh, we we hope we thought he was going to be able to switch. Um, so it's been it's been not it's been good. I think he's going to fit in just fine. He's he's certainly um, 
uh, blocked shots like like advertised, uh, which we like. You know, um, he's fitting in good. I, I've been very happy and pleased with with what we've seen so far. Of course, Chris Boucher, yeah. he resigns official. Yeah. Just give me a give me some comments. Give me a word about how big was that for the Toronto Raptors. Well, Chris continues to you know climb the ladder really in this league and um he does it with 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 being who he is um first of all his competitive nature's off the charts right he just goes and competes he's tough he can get the ball in the basket it's not pretty sometimes it's unorthodox but he figures a way to score around bigger people stronger people um his shooting is always um you know we're keeping an eye on he, he's a pick and pop guy you know we know we've seen him make lots of threes need him need him to continue to you know do that and and polish that part of his game up with some higher percentages and things but um no nah, i mean he's a raptor now right he knows the system he knows the culture he goes and competes he's not afraid he produces you know chris is chris is one of us absolutely thanks coach we have to talk about Chris Boucher, who just recently got his bag on a multi-year deal. Akil, he was in Toronto, but what did you make of that? Well, first off, deserve it. If you mm -hmm. watch the final Raptors game of the season, Chris Boucher put his heart on the line. That's the impression that he left with Bobby Webster and the gang. And, and they rewarded him. Sure, there was a dip in his performance after the career year he had the year prior. Mm -hmm. But if you look at how he trended towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. he was trending in the right direction. And I think the Toronto Raptors believe in their player development system. And this is a guy who went from a G League MVP he, right, fringe NBA player, mm -hmm. to now being a consistent contributor. And, and this is a young team. He's part of the culture. And I think if you're building a culture and you want guys to feel comfortable, you want familiar faces. So let's keep this group going. Let's run it back. And most importantly, he's a friend of the show. <laughs> so we're going to hear from him now. Like I said, the city is doing everything for anybody that brings anything for the city and anybody that plays, that represent. Toronto does a lot of things for that. And um, the resource, the fan, so many stuff that I could do. Like I said, I'm thinking about um, like expansion. That's when I say that it's like make young kids think that it's really it's possible to make it to the NBA and all that. And I think I have a great platform here to do that. And I think Toronto gave me that platform. I didn't have it nowhere else. So um, when I st when you start looking at that from where I started and where I am now, um, the city did a lot for me. So um, it's just like I said, you I can't put one word to describe what Toronto did for me, but. I know they did a lot, and that's one thing I'm grateful about, and hopefully I can keep doing that because, like I said, um, it's just the beginning, really. I didn't really do anything. I let my agent, my people, just um, do the work and tell me what the option was, but I knew I wanted to be in Toronto. I feel like I was building something, and um, you know, like I said, there's a big, there's a bigger plan for me than just playing in Toronto. You know, I wanted to be an inspiration for the kids. I wanted to do a lot of different stuff and being. Uh, Canadian, um, that made it a lot easier for me to uh, choose Toronto anyway, and especially knowing the family, the my teammates. Um, I got a lot of people around here that have helped me get here, so yeah, it was pretty easy to make that decision. Akil, we have another guy that we have to start talking about, DJ Wilson. He signed to the Raptors system organization. What do you make of him? Okay, well, first off, he's big. He's yep. a traditional big, if you like, right? Because, guys, you're worried about size, 6'9 across the board. He's 6'10, so there's a differentiator yeah. right there. But the shoulders, the strength, uh, um, kind of a rookie in a vet in the sense that not a lot of minutes, but he's been around. He's been around this program specifically, and I think he comes from a good program in Michigan. I like this young man. Sure, the numbers won't jump off the page in terms of points per game throughout his career. Mm -hmm. but what you're looking at is for a traditional big to throw into that lineup to really stifle anybody trying to penetrate and control the paint. And the Raptors are investing in his future right now. And I love that for this group because, you know, you've got Christian who's, let's say he's a step away from being yep. ready to contribute consistently, but you've got a guy with six years under his belt, tough guy that you've liked. He's had some big games with the Raptors in that short tenure that he had with those two, two, two um, ten days. Mm -hmm. So I like the deal. I like the deal too. And hey, when it comes to summer league, I'm the rookie. This is my first year here, and you're the vet with yes. 11 years under your belt. So let's hear from DJ Wilson now. All right, DJ, word is you put pen to paper, ink the deal. So how much of a relief is that going into summer league? Does that take any of the weight off? Uh, it takes some off, but I still got work to do. I still got a lot to prove. Um, I know what I'm capable of, and I can't you know, wait to get out there and showcase it. You got work to do. You got stuff to prove. What is that work? Uh, this right here, I'm always in the gym, so countless hours in the gym, working on whatever I can to get better. And, uh, you know, I know that's going to translate come game time. 
You've obviously been in communication with the Raptors organization because you've got the two, the, the ten days. You've been around the group. So, um, is there any insight into what you think they like or what role they expect you to fulfill while you are with the group? I think just being versatile on both ends, being able to switch and guard multiple positions, um, and then on the offensive end, being able to stretch the floor, being able to score down low inside off pick and rolls and whatnot. So, being able to do a little bit of everything, kind of like everybody on the roster. You are a veteran when it comes to this group of players. How is that role different for you? I think just, you know, leading not only by example, but being vocal as well. Um, showing guys kind of like the ropes, like you said, I'm going into what, my sixth year. Um, so I kind of know what to expect and kind of just bringing everybody along with it. Fans really want to get some insight into Christian. Like, you know, he's a draft pick, big guy. You probably bump shoulders with him on the court. Your thoughts on the young man? No, he's good. He's athletic. He's big. Um, he's got more skill than, you know, I thought at first. He can shoot the ball pretty well. We worked out in L.A. for a week together doing two-a-days. Um, so I'm real familiar a little bit with his game and whatnot. And no, he's good. He's good. The Raptor fans are going to like him. Well, that's it from us in Vegas. Akil, final thoughts? Let's play, man. All right, other people are playing. It's game time. Let's get these raps on the floor. Let's roll out the ball. Let's go. Speaking of game time, the Toronto Raptors will face the Philadelphia 76ers Saturday, July 9th at 1230. That's local time and 330 Eastern. From myself, Savannah Hamilton, Akil Augustine, Jake LaRue, Rob Leth, thank you for watching Raptors Today. <laughs>